I pray that your week has gone well and I am so excited to give you this devotion today and I really just ask that you would pray for me that God would be able to do a work within this devotion in the name of Jesus. So let's just agree in prayer together. Lord, I'm just so thankful, Father God, for you. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would do a work within this devotion, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray, Father God, that lives will be transformed and renewed, Father God. Lord, I am just so happy, Father, for what you are doing within this channel. And I pray that you will get all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. The title of today's devotion is Don't Give Up the Fight. Don't give up the fight. And I'm going to speak from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 through 40. Now, this is the story of Paul and Silas. This story has been one of my favorite stories for quite some time now. It has impacted me because there's just so many things that every time I read it, I regain a new understanding of what this story really is all about. Now, the story of Paul and Silas Basically, they went to prison because they were doing the work of the Lord. They were doing the work of the Lord and they wanted to be able to tell so many people about how to enter into the kingdom of God. They want to explain the importance of salvation. Now here you have this woman who basically was a psychic and she was chanting around them day in and day out and becoming a disturbance to them. And after a while, Paul just got sick of it and he turned around and rebuked that demonic spirit that was inside of her. And he was like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus come out of her and that demonic spirit came out oh my goodness this has caused so much chaos at this very given moment because the people that depended on her her masters who depended on her for wealth and for gain of money basically couldn't rely on her anymore so in their eyes they were going to be broke and they weren't going to have this money and they were so upset with paul and silas they dragged them through the marketplace and they brought them to the magistrate and as they brought them to the magistrate, they told them what they did. And they were just so upset and they threw them into prison. And before they threw them into prison, they beat them, they flogged them, they treated them like they were the scums of the earth. All the while, they were just ministering the word of God. But because they didn't get what they wanted, they punished Paul and Silas. They threw Paul and Silas into prison and they told the jailer, look, I want you to watch out for these guys and I want you to make sure that they do not escape. So the jailer did what he was supposed to do. Now at the midnight hour, at the midnight hour, that part always just impresses me so much. But at the midnight hour, Paul and Silas began to sing hymns unto God. They began to worship the Lord in the midst of all of their scars, in the midst of all of their bruises, in the midst of their pain, in the midst of their weariness. They began to worship their heavenly father. And as they were worshiping, so many people in the prison were observing this. They were listening to them singing praises unto God. And at that given moment, there was a huge earthquake. The foundation began to break, the doors flew open, and all of their chains were broken. Not just Paul and Silas's, but every single one of their chains in that prison were broken. And as soon as the jailer woke up, as soon as the jailer woke up and realized that everybody didn't have any chains on them, and that the doors were open, and that there was this huge earthquake, he was so scared, he was just like, oh my goodness. And he decided, what? He decided to kill himself. He wanted to kill himself. And at that given moment, right when he was about to kill himself, Paul stopped him. Paul stopped him and said, do not kill yourself. Do not kill yourself. We are all still here. We are all still here. And at that given moment, the jailer knew the God that they served. He knew at that given moment, he got on his knees and he said, you know, tell me about this God. Tell me about this God. How can I retain this salvation? How can I retain it? And that that moment, he was like, what can I do to be saved? What can I do to be saved? And he said, what did he say? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. Do you guys remember that verse when I quoted it that last week? And it's here again. This is a powerful verse. I mean, I believe that God is really trying to bring forth this verse here. Because it's just so important that we believe that, that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do believe that, we will be saved in the name of Jesus. And at that moment, basically, the people that were in charge, they wanted to release them out of prison. 
they wanted to release them quietly and Paul was like oh no I am a Roman citizen you beat me you beat me in front of everybody you dragged us through the marketplace and here I am a Roman citizen and you threw me into prison and you're just trying to get rid of me quietly no I want you to escort me out and release me so others may know that what has happened here and that's exactly what happened that's exactly what happened and they released them and when they released them Paul and Silas they went to the jailer's house and they ministered to his family as well and they all served the Lord man I love this story so much it's such a powerful story and I'm so thankful for it because it's just so many things that I learned through this and I I just want to share them with you there's four important life lessons four important life lessons now the first one is when you are trying to do the work of the Lord, there will be distractions trying to stop you from running the race God has called you to run. When you're trying to do the work of the Lord, there's going to be so many distractions that are going to try to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Now, this verse has impacted my life. It's Galatians 6, 9. It says, do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Oh, come on, somebody. Do not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. Listen, there's going to be times that we're going to feel weak. There's going to be times that we're going to feel weary. There's going to be times where distractions are going to come and try to stop us from doing the work of the Lord. Now, God is telling you, are you going to stop? Or are you going to keep running that race? Are you going to keep fighting the good fight? Saying, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to give up. Because in Galatians 6, 9, it tells me, do not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, I'm going to reap a harvest if I don't give up. Now you put your name in that. And I'm going to put my name in that. Galatians 6, 9 again. Do not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, Starley would reap a harvest if Starley doesn't give up. Now you put your name in that. And you don't give up and you realize what exactly Paul and Silas did here. That when they were trying to do the work of the Lord, this woman was a huge distraction. But he knew who was he, he was up against. He knew that he was up against this demonic spirit. And he was not going to allow this demonic spirit to stop him from doing the work of the Lord. And he rebuked it in the name of Jesus. He's like, oh, I recognize you. I recognize you. And I proclaim right now in the name of Jesus that you will come out in the name of Jesus so that I could do the work of the Lord. Come on. We have to stand up with that authority, with that faith, with that strength that God has given us and not allow any hindrances, any trials or tribulations to try to stop us from doing the work of God. Now let's look at the second important lesson. Do not think when you are being obedient to God that you will not face trials. When you are in the limelight, the enemy sees you as a target. If you think that, okay, yes, I'm a Christian, I'm doing the work of the Lord, I am going to walk this walk, I'm going to do exactly what he's called me to do, and I'm going to live this lovely, glorious life. I want to tell you that as a Christian, especially when you are in the limelight, especially when you are doing what God has called you to do, and you're going totally against what the enemy wants you to do, he sees you as a target, and he's going to try to destroy you. He's going to try to bring you down. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see that? Because where you are weak, God will make you strong. When you are a child of God, he will protect you, he will keep you safe, and he will carry you through, honey. He will carry you through. You see, in John 16, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Mm. In this world, you will, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. You see, God is letting you know you will have trouble. But sister, take heart. He has overcome the world. He's basically saying, I have taken care of this for you. You see, the word of God says that he is our Jehovah Nisi. He is our banner reigning in front of us, ready to fight these battles for us. You don't have to fight it on your own. You have to lean on him because he will take care of you. He will be your Jehovah Nisi. He will be the banner reigning in front of your battle, right in front of you saying, I got this. Let me take care of it. Let me do the rest. But you have to trust me. You have to allow me to hold you and protect you and keep you safe. That even in the midst of these trials, you will still trust me and know that I have overcome this world and surely I will take care of you. You see, 
The third lesson is, it's not the trials that you need to focus on, it's how you face that trial. It's how you face that trial. You see, because you could have trials coming at you left and right, left and right, left and right. And you know what? You could just say, I'm just going to go in this pit and I'm never going to come out. And you could grovel. You could complain. You can do all of those things. But God is saying, listen, it's not about the trial, but it's how you face the trial. You see, when Paul and Sil Silas faced this trial, they were thrown into this prison. They were embarrassed in front of everybody. They were beaten down. They were beaten down and they were thrown into this prison in chains. And even in the midst, they could have said, man, God, I was trying to do your work. Why didn't you protect me? Why didn't you keep me safe? They could have said that, but no, in the midnight hour, they started worshiping him and started praising him and started glorifying his holy name. And that part just impresses me so much because there's so many times even in my life where I'm going through things and I'm quick to complain. I'm confessing before y'all because I am not perfect. I am quick to complain and I have to check myself and I have to realize, Lord, I know that you're keeping me from something. You're allowing me to go through this for a reason. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I am going to have a faith faith and trust in you that you are in control that it's not about me but it's about you working through me and you will carry me through this just like you've carried me through other things in my life and in my past you carried me then you surely gonna carry me now you see because in verse 25 it explains how Paul and Silas prayed and they sang these songs to the Lord and when I was listening to this when it said you know in the midnight hour I couldn't help but thinking of my good old Fred Hammond there's a song from one of his albums long ago, and I'm not going to sing it for you. Well, maybe I will. Wait. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn around. It's going to work in your favor and around and around. I mean, when that song would come on and I would just start worshiping God, I'd be like, yes, Lord, late in the midnight hour, you're going to turn it around because in the midnight hour is a new day. It's a new season. A fresh anointing is coming your way. Fresh anointing because late in the midnight hour, while you're sleeping or while you're just enduring your hardships, God's working it around in your favor, but you have to trust in him. Hallelujah. You have to trust in him and believe that he is working it in your favor. You may not see it. You may not under understand it. You may not be able to really see it all around you but if you grab a hold of the hope in Jesus and say Lord I know you're gonna work it out that it's gonna work in my favor if I keep trusting in you if I keep believing in you if I keep on knowing that you are gonna grab a hold of me you're gonna grab a hold of my family and you're gonna carry us through these trials and you proclaim it and you believe it to be done because those chains and those bondages and those situations in your life will be broken in the name of Jesus and as much as the enemy wants to destroy you he cannot because you're protected by the blood of Jesus hallelujah yes Lord you see and the fourth lesson is the second part of verse 24 when you realize people are watching you you see because when Paul and Silas were singing people were watching them they were watching them they were observing them they were observing them the moment they came they came in because they're like oh yeah these men they love Jesus oh yeah they love Jesus okay okay let's see how they're going to react to this situation so they were going to see how they were going to react and because they react in a positive way because they reacted in a positive way great things happen in the midst of their situation and it only affected them but it also affected all the people that were around them you see, in Psalms 30, verse 5, it says, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Yes, you may have went to bed last night. You may have been crying. You may have been weeping. But I'm letting you know, I'm letting you know that joy comes in the morning. You say, you know, Lord, Lord, it's, it's another day. It's a new season in my life. And in the midst of Everything that I have gone through yesterday, I'm still going to trust you. I'm still going to grab a hold of your hand and I'm still going to trust in your word. You see, because your testimony can affect the lives around you like a beautiful chain reaction. You see, because because of their testimony, because of Paul and Silas's testimony, the jailer and his household, they became saved. They became saved. And not only that but their actions bless the prisoners. You see, because when you read the scriptures, it says that not only Paul and Silas' chains were broken, but the prisoners' chains were broken too. And when the jailer was about to kill himself, Paul said to him, he said, listen, not only are we here, but we are all here. Not only if, you know, is Paul and Silas here, but we are all here. 
I mean, I don't know about you, but if you think about a prison, you know, around us or, you know, that you ever even been to, you know that if the gates flew open and everybody was, you know, capable of leaving, you know that all them people will be running out trying to get their freedom. But this is how powerful God is. You see, because in the midst of Paul and Silas' trial, he allowed him to go through that because he knew the impact that it was going to make. Oh my goodness, in front of all of those prisoners, in front of the jailer, he knew that they could have ran away, but because they were serving God and because he created such a powerful testimony right there in that prison, they didn't even run away. They stayed there right with them because they themselves wanted to know about this amazing Jesus. Oh, God is so good. You see, in Matthew 5, 16, it says, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven. Let your light shine. Don't allow the enemy to try to put a top over your light. You know, you see, because God is saying, you know, let your light shine in the midst of adversity. Let your light shine and never allow your light to be blown out. And if your light is blown out, you say that prayer today and you say, Lord, let my light shine. Come alive within me once again. Renew me and strengthen me because I know that where I am weak, you will make me strong. I know that when I am broken, you will pick the pieces back together again and you will mold me. You will shape me to be the woman of God that you have called me to be in the name of Jesus. You see, you have to proclaim victory over your life because nobody's gonna proclaim victory like you can over your life. You have to proclaim it and believe it to be done and believe that God will do a work and he will in the name of Jesus. You see, Paul and Silas, they could have given up when they were flogged, but they fought the good fight. They fought the good fight. Let me tell you, there was a moment in my life where I was, I was heavily depressed. I was heavily depressed. I was going through a lot in my life. And I didn't know where to go or where to turn because I was just so frustrated. I was frustrated at the Lord. I was frustrated with family. I was frustrated with friends. I was just at that moment where I was just in a pit. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been in that pit where you feel like nobody understands you? And I had to get to a place where I surrendered all. Where I surrendered all and I said, Lord, I trust in you. I'm going to believe in you. And I had to get radical. I had to pray over my household. I had to pray over myself. I had to anoint my husband. You see, because this acronym changed my life. PUSH. P-U-S-H. PUSH. Pray until something happens. It changed my life. You see, because sometimes we just pray and we stop right there. You know, if we didn't see anything happen, if we didn't see it come into fruition, we just stop right there. But God is saying, no, honey, you pray until something happens. You pray until you get a breakthrough. You pray until you see deliverance. You pray until you see chains and bondages broken. You pray until God has taken you to where he wants to take you and where he wants to use you. You don't stop praying because you push. You keep pushing through. You fight that good fight and you do not give up. Because surely he hasn't given up on you and surely he will never give up on you. And you can't give up on yourself in the name of Jesus. So you push, you pray until something happens in the name of Jesus. And I'm so thankful that God has given us the example of Paul and Silas because they were a true blessing of God and they have impacted my life. And today I pray they impacted your life and that you remember if God could do a work in them in the midst of what they were going through and they could still worship and praise the Lord, then you can still just remember to be still and know that he is God. Let's pray together. Oh, Father God, I just praise your name. I praise you, Father God, and I thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would mold and shape these women to be who you have called them to be. Lord, that they won't let life's hindrances, Father God, stop them from doing the work that you have called upon their life, Lord God. Lord, we know that the enemy roars around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, but we rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. He has no control and he has no authority, Father God. So Lord, I ask, Lord God, that we would stand up and that we would rise above the ashes, Lord Jesus. Lord, that you would pour your love upon these women, Father God, that they would feel your strength today, Lord God, that they would walk out victorious saying, Lord God, that in the midst of their adversity, Lord God, that they would still praise you, that in the midst of their adversity, they would still call upon your name. And even though they may not know exactly what to say, that they would say the name Jesus and it will bring peace to their soul, strength in their life, Lord God, and love in their heart, Lord Jesus. And Lord, that their light would shine and they would not allow the enemy to dwindle their light, Lord God, but they would call upon your name the moment they feel weak, the moment that they feel weary, Lord Jesus. So Lord God, we just glorify you this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I am just so encouraged today and I pray that you are encouraged and that you remember to keep on fighting, to keep on fighting and don't give up just like Paul and Silas didn't give up. You have a wonderful day and God bless.